Thank you, Dr. Davies, for that extremely illuminating and vivid presentation. Uh, I'm a little bit at a loss of words about what to say now. Um, it's a hard act to follow, obviously, not just Dr. Davies, but Winston Churchill as well. Uh, I mean, my intention right now is to talk a little bit about solutions. We've heard a lot about the problem, but I wanted to try to give people some sort of sense realistically of what it is they can take away today. You know, where, how do you set out? How do you orient yourself? Um, what's it possible for an individual to actually do? Um, if you look, if you research, you know, what are the solutions to climate change? It's actually a relatively short list. It's big things, but it's a relatively short list. And it looks something like this. Uh, first, we've got to decarbonize the electricity grid and produce power with non-emitting sources, solar, wind, nuclear, geothermal, whatever it is. And then once that's done, we have to electrify everything, all the machines on the planet, so that they run on that clean power. Then we have to create carbon neutral fuels for those sectors we don't know how to electrify. We have to reduce emissions from agriculture, which is a big chunk of the pie and a big task. We have to protect nature by stopping deforestation, regrowing forests and preserving intact ecosystems. We have to decarbonize major industries like cement, steel and chemical manufacturing. And then we have to develop negative emissions technology to suck out of the air those remaining emissions we don't know how to eliminate. And we have to campaign for governments to invest far more money in all these sorts of solutions. And the final ingredient, if that wasn't enough, and this ingredient is absolutely crucial, is that we have to act with great speed. Climate science projects that we need to cut global emissions roughly in half by just a decade, as Dr. Davies described, and get to zero the entire planet by roughly mid-century to have just a two-thirds chance of staying under one and a half degrees Celsius. And that's just this century. If we don't get to zero, as Dr. Davies said, things just continue to warm. Okay, so these are the big solutions, but the question in your mind must be, well, what am I going to do about that? I'm not going to be the one to... Uh, decarbonize the cement industry. So what can you actually do? When most people think about what, how it is they can get involved, they usually think about their own personal footprint. Um, so that might include things like reducing air travel, or when it comes to food, reducing food waste and eating more vegetables. You can be deliberate about where you keep your money uh, moving your money to banks and investments that don't support carbon intensive industries. And then we need to electrify everything, all the machines in our houses and businesses when it's time for replacements or upgrades. So we've got to electrify space heating and cooling with things like electric heat pumps. We've got to electrify cooking with things like induction stoves. We have to electrify hot water heating, our vehicles and our garages, electric yard tools, we can add rooftop solar, that's fantastic. But while all these individual actions to reduce our personal footprint are necessary and important, they're nowhere near enough. And so we have to get involved at higher levels of organization, local and beyond, or we won't make it in time to meet targets. So what can you actually do? The first thing is just get involved, just choose something. Get active, show up. So a big majority of Americans are concerned about climate change. There is definite consensus in our society. 70% of American adults say they're concerned about climate change. And 40% of American adults say they're very concerned about climate change. I think what we need to do is convince this 40% who are already convinced, and who care a lot, but are just not doing much to get involved. We've got to overcome their inertia and get them active. We have to make it easier for people to get active. If even a fraction of all the people who are concerned about climate change but think to themselves, what difference am I going to make? If they got active, of course, it would make the difference. According to studies, you only need 3.5% of a population of a country activated to 
cause a revolution. Achieving social tipping point is key. We've got to get off the bench and into the game, not be passive spectators, and we have to bring our friends along with us. So what you can do is you can join a group, support an established climate advocacy organization, or run for local office, become part of a coordinated effort like ELCAN. Local or international, all scales of action are needed. And then we've got to focus on large-scale collective solutions to reduce emissions because coordinated solutions such as decarbonizing the electricity grid are orders of magnitude, will have orders of magnitude more impact than reducing the emission at reducing emissions at the speed we need compared to just tending our own garden. And another thing you can do, Dr. Davies mentioned, which is actually quite easy, is to talk more about climate change with your families, friends, colleagues, at your workplace, through local media. Talk about how climate will affect the things you care about in your own life. And talk about the opportunities, not just the risks. Solving climate change means improving our quality of life, making more livable communities, having cleaner air, clean water, healthy children, preserving forests and wild places, achieving energy independence, independence job creation, etc. And then, of course, you can communicate with your government representatives. Everybody knows this. But even those representatives supportive of climate action need to be reminded regularly that it's a priority for their constituents. We're fortunate in Wyoming to have unusually good access to our government officials. And you might think it's hopeless in a state like Wyoming with our prevailing politics to make much change. But two years ago, there was a bill in the state legislature that received more public comment than any other bill that session. And it was one where citizens came together to protect the rooftop solar industry. So it took 500 people to show up and testify um, to make the difference, and it did. 500 people, that's doable. Finally, you can think about your particular circle of influence using your unique skills and talents or professional expertise to raise awareness to act. If you're a builder, you can build greenhouses. If you're a teacher, share your knowledge. If you're a town planner, build more bike lanes, plant more trees. If you're an artist, make art. Imagination, I think, is the least exploited resource when it comes to addressing climate change. No one knows how we're gonna solve this problem. But keep in mind that most of the solutions for accelerating progress have not yet been thought of. We are so grateful to all our speakers, supporters, sponsors, event volunteers, and members of the planning committee who made today possible. And we hope this summit will be the first of more to come. Thank you so much for coming and keep up the work. Thank you.